Dr. Hawkins. Good afternoon, everyone, students, graduates, parents. If you're out there, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. For our graduates, for this May's commencement, we heard your cry. And I will say a cry because this is the end of one journey for you and the start of another journey to come. And what we wanted to do was bring you up to date on our commencement uh, activities that will take place in May. So I hope that you have paper, pencil, because there's gonna be a lot of information that we wanna give you. Um, and we want to, you to be able to ask questions. We're going to open up the chat. We want you to put your questions there. We have uh, a panel of individuals who are working on our commencement committee. Uh, they are the experts in these areas, and we want you to get the information that you need. This is a great time uh, here at Delaware State University, the, the anticipation and even some anxiety about commencement. It's always good. It's fun, but it, it, it is an accomplishment also. So pat, pat yourselves a, a little bit on the back because you know what? You are journeying towards the finish line. And parents, thank you so much for standing with you, us, with your children and, and getting them to this, this area of their life that will be a momentous occasion. So with that, I want to just introduce our uh, panelists today who will be talking with you. Um, we have Dr. Francine Edwards, who is the Deputy Chief Administrator for the University and the Co-Chair for the Commencement Committee. We have Ms. Alicia Dorsett, who is the Director of University Conferences and Events. We have Dr. Michelle Fisher, who is the Associ Associate Vice President for Campus Health. We have Ms. Terry Jeffries, who is the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies. We have Ms. Rhonda Thompson, who is the Associate Registrar here for the University. We have Mr. Jeff Ravel, who is um, our Manager of Ticketing. Uh, we have Ms. Joanne Holmes, who is the manager of the bookstore that you will hear from her also about your regalia. And we have, um, who will join us, hopefully will join us is Mr. Philip Holmes, our housing executive director and our registrar, the DSU registrar, Ms. Regina Cotter. So again, as I said to you, we heard you, we're coming to you with a lot of information and we want to hear back from you too. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Uh, Dr. Francine Edwards now so that we can get started. Okay, Dr. Edwards. Thank you. I'm Mr. Weaver, next slide. Um, greetings, everyone. We're so glad that you're here to join us today. And this will be the first, this is the first of many forms that we were going to host for our students, making sure that you have everything you need as we get closer to commencement. Um, one of the things I want to bring your attention to is the fact that there is a link to the commencement website on the DSU landing page. Our marketing team has moved that so that it's easy to access. Once you click on that link, it will take you to our commencement page with the countdown clock and a lot of the information that our um, great team members on this call today will actually share with you all. So we're going to try to go through these slides so that we can get to your questions. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have two commencement ceremonies. This worked really well as a result of some pandemic changes that we had to do last year. So moving forward, our graduates, those are students that are um, receiving masters or our doctoral degrees, will have their own ceremony. That is currently scheduled for the EH Theater, but I do want to let any graduates on the call know 
that if the number of graduates increases, we may have to move the venue to Memorial Hall. And we will keep you posted on that. We wanna make sure that there is enough space to accommodate our graduates as well as guests and the VIPs and our legislative body that will be attending. The undergrad ceremony is on May 14th and that is gonna be an alumni stadium. Um, we're doing some things differently because of COVID protocols. We're still gonna have our students line up at their respective holding areas for both ceremonies, but we will be preceding our graduates. And as we get closer to the date and as our coordinators for the rehearsal um, get their rehearsal date in place, we will walk through this and make sure that you have everything you need to know for that first part of our, our live ceremonies. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, just wanna warn everyone regarding parking and just making sure that you're sharing with your family and friends that are coming. We will have shuttle transportation provided and we wanna make sure that you are using the shuttles and parking on the spaces on campus because we don't want people to park off campus on commercial properties because you will um, get parking violations and they will tow. So we wanna make sure that you're when you enter campus, you're working with our campus police and other um, volunteers to make sure that you're getting from the parking lot to the stadium or to the um, Memorial Hall or to the EH Theater for that ceremony. Next slide, please, Mr. Weaver. So some important dates and deadlines, and I might have a few people chime in on this. The first thing you see is the completion of the graduation application. We know that for the most part, you guys have been on this and you have been submitting them, but those people that may have some late clearance issues, we are accepting those documents, but it needs to go through the proper process of going through the DocuSign, work with your advisor, your department chair, and your college dean to get those applications completed if you haven't already. Ordering your caps and gowns. Um, Ms. Joanne, if you're on the call, can you give us any insight into uh, the numbers that you have so far? And just reiterate that March 31st deadline for our students to purchase their caps and gowns and let them know what the contingency plan is if they're unable to make that date. Ms. Joanne. It doesn't look like she's on at this time. Oh, okay. So um, we, we get a, we get a, I would say weekly report from Ms. Holmes in the bookstore of students who are ordering their regalia. But after the March 31st date, it has to be a dead cutoff because we're still facing some shipping um, lags because of the pandemic and because of staffing at those companies that ship and mail the things out. So it's imperative that you hit that March 31st deadline. If you don't, there is a contingency plan and you can reach out to Ms. Holmes or reach out to myself and we can share that information with you. But we are really urging everyone to go on to the Hearth Jones website. It's a special site designed for DSU. If you've got your phone out with you now and you have not ordered your regalia, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and purchase your regalia. Students will get an email um, in April regarding the honor cords. We've gotten lots of calls and emails regarding the honor cords. Um, Ms. Thompson, if you wanna to speak to that, I would appreciate that at this moment. Thank you very much, Dr. Edwards. Yes, as Dr. Edwards stated, students will receive an email um, beginning in April. Um, we'll have a, since we have more graduates this year than we've had in the past, we, um, in the past, we only uh, extended it for two days. So we may go to four days of Monday through Thursday um, for a few hours during those days in order for students to come to the Office of Records and Registration in order to pick up your, uh, your, your honors cords. But again, an email will go out at the beginning of August, um, excuse me, the beginning of April um, with those dates and times for you all to come over to the records office to pick those cords up. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, we've had some wonderful opportunities to work with members of the senior class um, exec board, and we worked to provide a professional photographer to come to campus and do the photo sittings. We're working with Barksdale Photography. Um, again, the link is in this um, PowerPoint presentation, but it's also on the DSU commencement website. It's a $25 sitting fee, and what's great about Barksdale is that you pay that sitting fee, they will send you your comps and your proofs, and you can choose to get the pictures that you want. Um, you can get a couple hundred dollar package, you can probably get one photo for an additional $25, but 
but you can also send the link that they give you that they've curated with your photos to family members and friends, and they can purchase their own picture. So the photo dates, as you see on the screen, April 19th through 21st through the 22nd, and then April 26th through the 29th. So if you haven't done this already, go online, schedule an appointment for yourself to get your photos. They're requesting that you come dressed in um, business attire or you're at least dressy from the waist up they will provide a cap and gown for that particular photo, but they wanna make sure that you're dressed up for the other fitting. They're gonna do obviously two different styles, one with your cap and gown and one with your business or your dress up attire. With regard to the regalia pickup for students who weren't able to meet the March 31st deadline, these are the dates that the bookstore will be open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. April 19th through the 20th and then May 2nd through the 14th. You have to have your ID or your driver's license in order to pick up the regalia. Um, again, Ms. Holmes will order a limited number of caps and gowns, so we cannot stress enough the March 31st date. The last column, we're gonna be working with our um, uh, Jasmine Buxton and our rehearsal team, and I believe Dr. Elin is on that team as well, but we're having two, two mandatory rehearsals, one for our graduates on May 10th, and the undergraduates May 13th at 10 a.m. It's really important that you come because there are some things that we're, that we're gonna be giving out at that um, rehearsal in addition to going over the whole ceremony. And so we wanna make sure that leading up to the commencement, you have an opportunity to meet with us face-to-face, -face, go through the whole process and familiarize yourself with what you need to do on the actual day of your ceremony. Next slide, please. We are, for the first time since I've been here, doing a commemorative graduation t-shirt, um, courtesy of the Office of Human Resources. So we have Dr. Hawkins and that team to thank. Um, we've come up with a really great design for our graduates and for our undergraduates. The graduate count is, I think, based on the number of graduates that have applied for graduation, the graduates are almost completely um, ordered, but we still need to get those orders in from our undergraduate students. Um, even though the deadline says March 21st, if you have not ordered your shirt, you can go ahead and order. We'll give you till the end of this week because we wanna turn the order into the company by Monday. Next slide, please. I'm gonna turn the next two slides over to Ms. Thompson um, in the registrar's office. Thank you again, Dr. Edwards. I'm not going to read this to you all because you see it there on the screen. However, uh, two things that I will definitely point out as far as the graduation requirements are concerned. You must have at least 120 earned credits and you must have at least a 2.0 GPA. Even if you're at 119 and a 3.6, you have not met the minimum GPA or requirements of the credits requirements for graduation for de from Delaware State University. So. Again, you must have more than at least 120 or more and a 2.0 or higher in order to receive a degree of any type from Delaware State University. Even though your major may require a higher GPA, the university states at least 124 earned credit hours and at least a 2.0 minimum GPA. Um, so as far as regalia, we've already covered regalia, and I do want to add one point here, uh, Dr. Edwards and Dr. Hawkins. Um, students will receive an additional email today um, before 4.30 if your graduation application and audit just came in today or within the last couple of days. So if you just submitted your application and the Office of Records and Reg Registration received it today, I will be sending out an additional email in order for you to order your regalia and get that in before the March 31st deadline, which is next week. Um, regarding diploma distribution, as it states here, the graduates, the graduate students will not receive their diplomas. They have a different clearance process on the graduate students' side. But as far as the undergraduates are concerned, undergraduates are able to pick up their diplomas after the commencement ceremony on Saturday, May 14th, between the hours of 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. in the Wellness and Recreation Center. You must have your student ID, so tuck it away in your pocket, in your purse that you will probably have under your regalia, 
but just tuck your ID away so that once you do enter the Wellness and Recreation Center, you are able to pick up your diploma. For those diplomas that are not picked up between the hours of 12 and 3 on that particular day, we will already have them marked and we will fit, um, send them via FedEx the following week. So you will receive them via email. Um, you will receive them via email once, the, once they're packaged for FedEx. So you definitely want to monitor your DSU email for that tracking if you do not and you're not able to pick up your diploma from 12 to 3 after commencement. I will also be sending out an additional email for you to make sure the spelling of your name is correct the way you want it on your diploma, even though we already have that inf in information in the system, along with your mailing address. We want to make sure that we send your diploma to the correct mailing address if you're not able to pick it up after commencement. And one other thing to keep in mind, if you're not able to pick them up, make sure that it is a physical address because these are sent via FedEx at no charge to the student. FedEx does not deliver to PO boxes. So it will come back to DSU if you have entered a PO box on your form as your mailing address. Um, so um, no other people are allowed into the Wellness and Recreation Center other than the graduate. So parents, guardians, family, friends, you'll have to see the diploma once the student exits the Wellness and Recreation Center with the diploma. Um, and I think that's it for me, uh, Dr. Edwards. Thank you very much. All right, next slide. All right, I'll do this slide since Mr. Holmes is not on and I see this question is in the chat. So we have talked with Mr. Holmes in housing and the process for our students that should not, you know, that will not be able to move out because of graduation you are going to be allowed to remain on campus. You have to email housing at desu.edu two weeks prior to request that extension. Uh, Mr. Holmes and his team will give you any additional information that they need. And the move out time for you is the Monday after graduation by five. We want to remind students that you're staying on campus. The code of conduct is still at play. Any COVID protocols are still at play. And any violations of these things while your time has been extended past move out could result in forfeiture of participation and commencement. So we want everybody to participate. So just hang on, you know, follow the rules and you will be able to move out on Monday at 5 p.m. Next slide, please. Um, Jeff Ravel, if you're on the call, um, please join us to talk about ticketing. Yes, I'm here. Um, first, I'd like to say congratulations, graduates and family. Um, I'm the ticketing manager for athletics and events here at Delaware State University. And I'm just going to go over with you what the undergraduate ceremony ticketing will look like and the graduate ceremony ticketing. So for undergraduates, each undergraduate will receive 10 tickets for alumni stadium, which will be color coded. In the event of inclement weather, the following will apply. Each undergraduate will utilize the four color-coded tickets for seating in Memorial Hall. The remaining six color-coded tickets will be for the overflow in the MLK Student Center. Ticket pickup times will be May 2nd through the 6th from 9 to 5 p.m. At, at the ticketing booth located in Memorial Hall Gymnasium. I want to make one thing very clear. Um, with this committee, we have determined that uh, each student getting 10 tickets, uh, will keep us in protocol, uh, with fire marshals and, uh, with the, what the university can hold. So outside of the 10 tickets, we will not be allowing any additional tickets to be added to any students, uh, package. If you lose your 10 tickets, it will be your responsibility. We will not be reprinting any tickets. Okay. It will be your responsibility to hold on to your tickets and distribute them to your guests uh, in any way you see fit. But as soon as you pick them up from the ticketing booth, you will no longer be able to come and pick up additional tickets. So please keep that in mind. May 13th at rehearsal and at senior send off event, we will also be there at those two events as well, providing people to pick up their tickets. Those will be the last opportunities for you to pick up your graduation tickets. And please mind me if it's a little loud in my background right now. 
Um, next is the graduate ceremony ticketing. Each graduate will receive a set number of tickets for EH Theater and memori uh, or Memorial Hall Gym. This ticket number will be based on the capacity of the location. Again, you will have the same pickup times of May 2nd through 6th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the student ticket office and at your rehearsal on May 10th. Outside of that, I just want to reiterate one more time. After you pick up your tickets from the ticketing booth, those are your only 10 tickets that will be distributed to you. Please try to keep them in a safe place because we will not reprint any other tickets. And that's pretty much all I have. Thank you, Mr. Ravel. Can you answer one question that I know we always get um, about tickets? Can say I'm graduating, I am only gonna use five of my tickets or two of my tickets. Can I give my tickets to someone else? Yes, you could You could do whatever you like with your 10 tickets. If you only have five tickets and you wanna provide the other five to uh, another student to assist them, that's totally fine. However, just do not, come to the ticketing booths trying to pick up another student's tickets. Again, that student must pick up their tickets and give them to you. They cannot call the office or email us to say, hey, I would like this person to have my tickets. It will be their responsibility to pick them up and distribute them how they would like. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will now ask Ms. Dorsett to join us to talk about our senior send-off. Yes, thank you, Dr. Edwards. Good afternoon and congratulations to all of you prospective graduates on the call. As part of our commencement activities, I am here to invite all seniors to our undergraduate senior send-off event. This year's theme is Senior Court Vibes, and it is surely to be a fun event. Senior Court's vibe will take place on the basketball courts immediately following the commencement rehearsal on that Friday. In addition to music, food, and games, the DSU Alumni Association will be there to welcome you to the Alumni Association and to answer any questions you may have about that transition. Also, as previously mentioned, this will serve as an opportunity for you to pick up your graduation tickets if you haven't done so during that allotted time as well as pick up your t-shirt if you hadn't done so previously. So I look forward to seeing you all there and be sure to put any questions that you have in the chat. Thank you. Next slide. Next slide, please. I would now like to have Ms. Jeffries talk about the Presidential Leadership Award. Good afternoon and congratulations, graduates, and thank you, Dean. Um, Dr. Edwards, I'm still used to calling you Dean Edwards. <laughs> but certainly, um, we're excited about the Presidential Leadership Award um, that is given annually, uh, and it is for our undergraduate students. Um, just be mindful, students, of the um, application requirements. Your submission deadline is on April the 8th um, this year. And uh, please look at the spelling of my last name, because I know last year we had a couple of students who were uh, misspelling my, my, my name, so we didn't receive your applications until after the deadline. But uh, please make sure if you're interested in applying for the Presidential Leadership Award that you um, adhere to the requirements here um, listed. Um, I will not necessarily go over all of those, but the most critical thing that we're looking for is your submission in a single PDF. Uh, it's much easier for the committee to evaluate um, the applications when everything is submitted at one time. Uh, and certainly um, brag about yourself in this, um, in this application because we want to see um, your accomplishments and make sure that you are, um, we select the best candidate for this award. Um, please make sure um, that uh, you adhere to the deadline and um, best of luck to all of you and congratulations. Dean, Dr. Edwards. Thank you. Next slide, please. Dr. Fisher. Yes, good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to our graduates. 
I would just like to say, as we enter into what many are referring to as a post-pandemic phase, whether you refer to COVID-19 as a pandemic or as being endemic, it is important to remember that this is still a very fluid situation. We are still hearing of emerging variants. We still hear of individuals testing positive. And I would just like to say that the health and safety of our graduates, guests, and DSU community is still our priority. Right now, we still require members of our community to test once or twice a week, depending on your vaccination status, and to wear masks indoors. At a minimum, we may require, and I do say may, because as I said, this is a fluid situation, proof of vaccination and a negative test for anyone who is unvaccinated. It is important for me to let you know we are still monitoring CDC and state COVID guidelines as well as COVID trends, and we will update our communication to you on what our protocols will be as we get closer to the day and we get more information. Thank you. All right. That is our last slide. So now we're going to field the questions. I'm trying to look in the chat. I've been answering as we've gone along. And I think I'm at, do the nursing graduates attending pinning ceremony pinning the afternoon of May 13th? Due to nursing graduates attending the pinning after noon of May 13th, how long does a graduation rehearsal typically last? Um, we're hoping not more than an hour because we're not going to physically walk through everything. We're going to talk through it. So um, probably 30 minutes of us talking and then answering questions and then leaving some time for you all to get the t-shirts and your graduation cards and working with the registrar's office to get those things that are probably more important to you for the day of commencement. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling back up. There was a question about someone not being able to make rehearsal because they are out of state. Um, we'll be able to catch you up on the day of um, once you get to campus. Just make sure that you arrive on time and make sure you continue to check the commencement website. Um, Dr. Edwards? Yes. Yeah, I just want to let you know I responded to that individual on the side and uh, made her aware to reach out to me. Okay, very good. Um, if you have ordered your cap and gown prior to the deadline, Ms. Joanne, uh, she did email me. She said she's on the call. Ms. Joanne, do you have any information about how long it's taking to um, mail the regalia once it's ordered? Ms. Joanne? She's on the call. Okay. She said, okay, and my email, she said four to five weeks is the new delivery estimate um, for regalia to arrive at home. But in answer to, I think that was Ms. Um, Ms. James's question, if you don't receive your cap and gown, they do provide a generic black cap and gown for students to be able to take their photos in. Barksdale will do that. Um, Dr. Hawkins, are you scanning the chat as well? I am. Doctor, so there think is a the question in the chat. Um, oh, I just, uh, if you are a graduate and you live out of state, can the tickets be mailed to you? Oh, I believe, Jeff, is that the student you already responded to? Say, that, say the question one more time, I do apologize. If you're a graduate and you live out of state, can the tickets be mailed to you? So you're another individual, I would say, um, I'll speak to you on the side in regards to that matter. Um, and I'll, uh, uh, I'll give you my email now if you need it. Are, are you, are you prepared to write it down? Why don't you put it in the chat? Mr. Ravel? Will do. And while you're on the, while you're still on the call, Mr. Ravel, there's a lot of questions about children, young children and tickets. Yep. And, you know, we've discussed that. So would you give um, the, the graduates an update on that? They're yes. asking about tickets and children. Yes. So 
um i did respond to one individual uh in the chat as well when it comes to children anyone that has to take a seat will need a ticket to get in there so unless they are uh unless you're holding a, a, a newborn child um they will need a ticket in order to enter the facility The Weaver, do we have any other? Yes, there's a question. Is our graduation application separate from our senior audit? That is the same thing, correct, Ms. Thompson? Yes, it is the same thing. It's two pages. So the front page is the application page and the back page is the audit page that has all four needed signatures. So both of those pages are completed with you and your academic advisor to move on to your chairperson, the dean, then move over to the records and registration office for processing. Ms. Thompson, while you're still on the line, there was a question that popped up about the honor cords. Someone is asking the color of the honor cords. Okay, so the honor cords, the honor is gold. So based on your status of cum laude, uh, magna laude, and summa, um, you'll have one, two, or three gold cords along with the red and blue DSU cord. Thank you, Dr. Hawkins. And I'm assuming this is another question for Ms. Thompson. How do we know if our graduation applications are approved? Okay, so there is a process. You as the student, you also sign the application and with your advisor or your chairperson who initiates it for you, they will receive a copy or maybe the last two months, if you have not received your graduation application. But also check your junk mail or your spam on your phone or your email, because again, sometimes our DSU emails go to your junk or your spam. Um, but you can definitely check with your advisor or your chairperson to see if it's been signed off on. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Okay. Um, another question. I am a December 2021 graduate and our graduation ceremony was canceled. I would like to know if we are going to be able to participate in the spring commencement ceremony. Yes, Ms. Dorsett. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a delay with my mute button. Um, those who graduated in the summer and fall of 2021, um, they are invited back to the graduate commencement. There was an email that was sent this morning, um, and it's a survey asking if you would like to participate in that graduate commencement. The location of the graduate commencement depends on those reply. Um, so we have a deadline of April 1st for you to reply, letting us know that you will attend. Check your emails, your DSU emails. And if you have any questions, um, you can send us an email or send Dr. Edwards an email and we'll reply directly. Um, um, Ms. Dorsett, there was a um, question in the chat about the date for the uh, Presidential Leadership Award application. Can you go in and correct that? It still says the 15th of April instead of the 8th. Okay, yep, it is April 8th and I'll update that on the website. Thank you. The housing request to stay on campus does um, apply to students living in the li living and learning commons. You just need to email Ms. email housing at dsu.edu requesting an extension to stay. Um, there's another question. Will we be graduating by college or is everyone graduating together? The undergraduates from all four colleges will be together. And the graduates, those master students and the doctoral students will be graduating together on that Thursday, May 12th. The undergraduates on Saturday, May 14th. If you graduate in the fall, can you still participate in senior portraits? Yes, go on to the Barksdale link and sign up for a time.
Oh, here's and a question. There was a... oh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, no, it's a question. Where do we order the T-shirts? Um, that link is on the commencement website as well. There's a link for graduates and there's a link for undergraduates. And there was a young lady that was in the chat, actually. She said the link was not working and I had asked her to put her email and her shirt size in the chat so that I could just go on and do that for her. But the link should be working. There's a question in the chat that says, what is the dress code colors for undergraduates? We're, there's no dress code for our students. And most students usually dress up. Um, the only dress code issue for the outdoor graduation is um, that girls uh, have to wear a shoe that does not have a spike heel. You have to wear wedges because it will damage the, um, what is it called? the AstroTurf on the football field. So we request that students wear platforms or flats, no stilettos or high heels that would damage the turf. Uh, we do have a question, I guess this is for Dr. Fisher. Will family members be required to get tested for COVID before attending? Will they have to be vaccinated? Unfortunately, I don't have a definitive answer for that at this time, but I encourage everyone, if you're unvaccinated, to consider getting vaccinated for your own health and well-being. At, but as I said, at a minimum, we may require vaccination and or testing, and I will let you know that as soon as that information is finalized. And I'm not sure if this one was already answered. How do we get the honor cords if we do not live in Delaware? If you do not live in Delaware and you plan to participate in commencement, we will not have them available for you. If you're an undergraduate, we will not have them available for you on Saturday. But if you are in Delaware on Friday, the day before, then you can definitely come by the Office of Records and Registration and we will give you your honor cords. Of course, graduate students do not receive honor cords. And for those who do not receive their honor cords or come by on that Friday to receive their honor cords, if they haven't picked them up during the allotted times already, we will definitely mail those to you after we return to the office in the next week. Thank you. questions. I'm checking the chat as well because questions are popping up there. Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions that we haven't already covered. Okay. So I think that uh, if we can just uh, have these questions, uh, Mr. Uh, Weaver, if, if we can record these questions in the chat and pull them off for those that we did not answer, you're saying that we we kind of covered most of them, but I'm yeah. sure there might be a few that we have not. We would okay. be able to at least answer them and put them on the commencement website. Yes, we can do that. So. With that, I would say that it's a lot of information, uh, students that you just received. Um, we're looking at uh, all of your questions and uh, we will get back to you. As uh, Dr. Edward said, this is not the last forum that we're having. We're going to have uh, a few more because we wanna keep you up to date. We wanna keep your parents up to date. Uh, any new information we want to bring to you so that you're hearing it from the commencement committee, not just reading it on a website. So with that, we, we again, we want to thank you for joining with us today. 
we will send out a notification when our next forum will be, which will be in a few weeks. Uh, because I think I saw on the website, keep me straight, Dr. Edwards, how many days and counting to commencement? I don't have like, that website up on <laughs> like 50, 50 something. I saw last days. time I looked, it was 50 something days, days that we have. And we want to make sure that everybody is up to date on what we're doing. And okay. as Dr. Edward said, that there are new things that we are also doing um, for commencement, um, such as bringing you to, to uh, seating you uh, before we start the ceremony. So that's, a, that's something new. And we're gonna have more information on that as we go along. So I thank you again. Congratulate you again. Wish you all the best and we will be in touch soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care.